Welcome to Courageous Leadership with Virginia Prodan, training you to lead with courage. Hello, everyone. We are so happy you are here because if you are here, you are interested to learn and to develop the courageous leader in you. And we love to help you to walk by your side and develop that leadership position in, in your that already exists. You just have to let it flourish. You have the skills, you have the talents. And many times I use, as we said before, um, my own example uh, to show you that every person can be a leader. You don't have to have the blueprint, but God will uh, give you everything that you need in under any circumstances. He started with me in communist Romania and helped me to take a dictator to court in order to respect uh, human and religious rights. You can read more in my memoir, Saving My Assassin. But we also love to introduce to you real courageous leaders that have done and they are doing an amazing job. And one of this, those leaders, an attorney that I call a friend, and I'm so honored to have him here for the second time, is uh, Brad uh, Dacus with the Pacific Justice Institute. Their work is absolutely amazing, and I'm sure that you will learn uh, lots of things and you will be encouraged by what Brad is going to share with us. So with that, Brad, please introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you, Virginia. Yes, my, uh, my name is I'm Brad Dacus. Uh, president and founder of the Pacific Justice Institute. Uh, it's an organization, a nonprofit legal organization. I founded back in 1997 with the help of former U.S. Attorney General Ed Meese. Uh, we now have offices all across the United States. In fact, we have more offices across the United States than any other legal organization defending religious freedom, parental rights, or the sanctity of human life. Uh, we also uh, are unique in that we don't just cherry pick a few high profile cases that look good in a newsletter. Our goal is to make sure that everyone gets help, that no one's left on the side of the road. Needless to say, we're very, very busy. That is wonderful. And I like what you underlined at your organization. There are many other organizations that might be similar, but what is unique with you is that you have uh, all pe people and uh, um, offices all over the United States, and you also don't refuse anyone. Everybody can come and, and receive the, the help that they need. And we see all of us, we can agree that we are seeing America or some people trying to change America in something that we never uh, thought that it's going to happen in America. We watch around the world, in Romania, in Guatemala, in China, in China, and so many other places. But now we have to fight for religious rights. We have to fight for freedom of speech, for uh, what our children are taught in school and so forth, for the right to go to church, to go to church during COVID and so forth. The list goes on. And it's so important to have leaders, courageous leaders like you. Can you share just a little bit of a few cases that, that you have so people can have uh, an understanding of your work? Oh, certainly. One of the most dramatic cases we recently had this year uh, was involving the massive shutdown of churches, uh, while at the same time, these uh, governors of blue states uh, decided to allow everyone else to open, including liquor stores and pot shops, marijuana parlors. Uh, but churches, no, they had to stay closed. Synagogues had to stay closed. Well, we at Pacific Justice Institute uh, are very strategic. And right after Amy Coney Barrett was sworn on to the Supreme Court, uh, we actually, even before that, we moved on litigation uh, to uh, protect churches in California, in particular, that were shut down 
while everyone else basically was allowed to open up. Um, it was in Silicon Valley, uh, in San Jose, so that area. We went ahead and uh, filed a lawsuit. Uh, we did not prevail in the federal district court of Virginia, so we filed an appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. They didn't rule in our favor either, or in favor of the churches. So we filed a, a strategic emergency appeal with the United States Supreme Court. Now, to get a case heard for the Supreme Court is sort of like a Hail Mary pass at a football game. To get a case heard for an emergency injunction uh, to, from the Supreme Court, where you're not waiting for nine months or a year to be heard, but you're wanting it now in just a few days, that's like a Hail Mary pass across town from one stadium into another stadium and still getting the touchdown. So it's very, very difficult. We filed it. In three days, we got the emergency injunction that we sought from the Supreme Court, six to three decision in just three days. And uh, it was against Governor Gavin Newsom of California. And, uh, and, those ch and those churches were opened up. And it sent ripples across the United States telling these liberal governors in blue states, uh, no longer do you have a free ride to ignore the constitutional rights of individuals or religious institutions like churches. And uh, that was a, an incredibly important victory uh, just this last March. That is so wonderful, and I hope that people take at heart that, yes, it is possible to fight and it is possible to, to win. And I, I, as lawyers, we know that we can do as our part as much as possible, but we need courageous clients. Without courageous clients, you cannot have a case. And for that reason, I want to emphasize how important it is for a pastor to be courageous and say, I stand up for my congregation, or a business person who encounters different illegal um, uh, you know, requirements from the government uh, violating our constitutional rights to say, Yes, I will stand up instead of thinking, well, why should I be the one to stand up? Maybe others will, because it's time for us in every single area, you know, as a lawyer to defend our clients, but the clients to stand up and say, enough, it's enough, I need that. What is your approach? What uh, is your advice for future clients, for people that will encounter those kind of violation of the constitutional rights for themselves or for the business or for their school? Well, they, they first uh, should pray about it and, um, and seek God's direction. They, don't wanna, they shouldn't act out of the flesh. It's easy to do that. Uh, but at the same time, they also don't want to throw away their rights and freedoms you know, the Apostle Paul in Acts, the book of Acts, uh, chapter uh, 22, uh, laid claim to his rights of due process under the law as a Roman citizen. Mm -hmm. And then in chapter 25, he laid claim to his rights to appeal to the highest court in the land, Julius Caesar. Uh, but he, how he carried himself was very important. So that's number one, uh, to pray about it and to, to, to uh, carry ourselves as God would want us to, uh, respectful, although disagreeing. And then also to, to quickly find out your rights. We at Pacific Justice Institute have incredible resources. All of our resources are free. Our legal representation is free without charge. We pick up the costs. Uh, we're very unusual. And we have over 50 cases right now in active litigation. So we're very busy. Then on our website, uh, they can get information about, employers can get information about their rights to uh, live their faith in the workplace. Uh, they can also, uh, you know, parents can get information about their rights to resist social workers threatening to take their kids. Uh, you know, churches can get information on their their rights uh, in terms of politically uh, to have their voice heard, but also uh, to overcome land use zoning restrictions. Uh, we have uh, incredible resources involving uh, the vaccine mandates for both employers, for employees. Saying, "Gosh, what do I do? Do I? I mean, they said they said they're going to fire me. You know, this is we have the information for students who are about to be booted out of college or lose their scholarships. We have that information." So I encourage people to go to our website, take a look specifically at that information, the vaccine mandate information, follow it. And if they follow it and they file that religious exemption uh, as we prescribe, uh, then, and they're denied, they can contact us for free representation. We're helping people already all across the country. And we have more offices, like I said, 
than any other organization of our kind from coast to coast, from Miami to Washington State, from Southern California to New York City and, and beyond. Um, so we're here to serve people and once again, without charge. Yes, and I'm glad that you said that. And in the same time, I, we all know and we have to acknowledge there is a, a time a frame time when we can stand up and uh, and fight for those rights and make everybody respect those rights because as much as you might be afraid you we all have to understand that you use today one right tomorrow it's going to be another right there is not going to be a stop to that because when you give your rights to the government the government is never going to take give them back to you. It's just the way I, I live under socialists and communists. And I understand that some people are very in love with socialists and communists. Uh, it's a lie. It's nothing. Uh, I signed my, uh, my, my book with freedom is precious because I really believe the freedom that we have in this country and the freedom that we fight as lawyers, as people, as business people is so precious. We never receive that freedom from a government. We receive it from God. We respect the government to take care of when we have enemies outside or inside that will take our freedom away. But we are never supposed to let the government take uh, our freedom away. And we have this situation. How do you help people when you have the government saying, well, we're going to knock on your door and search to see if you're vaccinated or not? To me, it sounds like they don't have a arrest warrant. They don't have the right to come. And when I came to United States of America, that was the most precious um, right that I realize because there is no, nowhere in, in the entire world than in America because that, and that is precious. How you advise someone who I say, well, I'm going to let them do this time, but not tomorrow. Yeah, that's a really good point. And unfortunately, we've seen that actually play out. Uh, oftentimes, it's been social workers uh, threatening to that they, they must be let in the house, and if not, they're going to call the police and take the children and make all these threats. Uh, it's, and it can be very scary, very intimidating. And yet, uh, people need to know that without a warrant, they have no right to enter your house. Uh, we handled the case matter like this a uh, number of times, numerous occasions. And uh, they'd call us, they'd say, they're at the door right now, they're demanding that we let them in. And I'd say, you know, tell them to come back uh, next Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. You'd be happy to let them come in. And then they said, OK, they're gone now. I said, OK, you've got 30 minutes. Get your bags packed and leave the place until you have your children um, go to your grandparents, whatever, have the children examined by a private pediatrician, a private psychologist, have an issue report saying X, Y and Z, have it sent certified mail to the C CPS worker and their, their supervisor. Then you can come home. That's one of the things that we give instruction on. But, you know, recently, though, President Biden has uh, announced that he wants a sort of a door-to-door -door strike force, if you will. And that strike force would be going door to door, knocking on doors to see if people are vaccinated or not. And if they're not vaccinated, there's going to be a log, a lodge, you know, a login taken as to who is not vaccinated. And then they're also going to strongly encourage those people to be vaccinated on the spot uh, with very uh, much, with a lot of intimidation. This is what the Gestapo uh, otherwise known as Biden and his administration are going to are trying to do, and have announced that they will do. So we at Pacific Justice prepared a an antidote to the strike force on our website, so that people can read exactly procedurally what they need to say and do if the strike force knocks on their doors. And uh, this is something to be taken very seriously. The the noose is getting tighter and tighter. The intimidation stronger and stronger. And yet the good news is we've got. Thanks to former President Donald Trump, we've got the judges on the Supreme Court, the federal circuit courts, the district courts. Uh, we can now win this, and we are winning it with our many, many cases. But it takes, as you said, Virginia, people to stand up and be the real heroes and say, I'm not going to surrender my rights, that they need counsel, and we're here to serve them uh, at any time without charge. 
And I believe another way of people to be courageous is when somebody is in a situation and they stand up, they have to surround these people and encourage them and be there in unity for them because nobody wants to be by themselves when the government with all the threatening, uh, you know, forces and everything will say. But from my own experience in socialists and communists, I can tell you that if we resist polite, kind, with our constitution, knowing our rights from the constitution, going, like you said, to your website and uh, searching all the, the things that people might need from different areas and knowing your rights and explaining to the people that will come to your door this, those are my rights or somebody who will say or threaten you, you know, to lose your job, kind and polite explain, they will back up, back off because many times is the ignorance. Many times is the fact that people don't know, you know, their rights. They think that we have such a long history where the, gov the government was protecting us not against us. And this right. this situation, it's new. We have to recognize it's new for American people. And in any situation, a new situation, you have to learn. And I'm glad that, that um, you know, Pacific Justice Institute has this opportunity. What would you say that people can do and use for their relatives or friends or acquaintances that might never go to your uh, to your website, can they print those documents? Can they share those documents? What what will be the best way to do it? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad you mentioned that because it's easy for people to say, "Oh, that's good to know. That's a nice thing to to know about. Good resource," and not make this and not have the second question, which is, "Who do I know that can benefit from it?" Exactly. And then how do I get it to them? Well, an easy way to get it to them is actually go to the website and uh, go ahead and copy that 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 page or you know that site that, and then forward that site to uh, that with that uh, information with the, like the vaccine mandates for example, forward that to everyone they know so that in, those individuals can go in, click if they're a student, click if they're an employee, or click if they're an employer. They can click that, uh, put in their email, get their information. Get all that information that they can have it and and take advantage of it. So there's we have so much in the way of resources from the website. Uh, we also have a 28 pages of Q and A just on the issue of the vaccine mandates, and that's separate from our specific instructions on how to file for religious exemption. Um, we've really got real empowerment. And one thing I want people also to note is that uh, if they have already had COVID. If they've already had COVID, uh, then they have grounds for a medical health exemption, period. Uh, they need to, ideally, it's best if they can have a doctor uh, in, a, in a letter saying uh, they've already had COVID uh, and they, the doctor uh, has prescribed them not to have the vaccine because it could have more severe results. It's a fact. People who've had COVID, if they have the vaccine, they are much higher risk of having serious complications. Plus, studies show it actually weakens the natural immunity. So it's, it's, it's not only not necessary, it's potentially harmful and even counterproductive. That's a solid defense for a medical health exemption. And that's separate from a religious exemption, which simply requires a sincere religious belief, a sincere conviction. Doesn't have to be a certain church you go to or doctrine, um, just sincere. We talk all about specifically how to do that uh, on our website pji.org. Virginia, right now there are millions of Americans who are facing losing their jobs and not even getting unemployment. They, especially if they don't fall for religious exemption and they get fired for not taking the vaccine, they, they, there's a good chance they won't even get unemployment benefits. Um, so they need to, to know what to do. And um, if they do what they need, they need to do, they'll have a strong case and they'll more likely than not keep their job and be able to move forward. 
that's that's wonderful because I believe the most important is knowledge. And after knowledge is what are you going to do with the knowledge? And when you are equipped with knowledge, you have a different response and a different attitude and a different perspective about the future. You, you know, we know our future is in God's hands. We know that, you know, all those things are temporarily and are just a test. They will increase our faith. There is nothing, uh, you know, according to Romans 8, 28 and also Proverbs 21, 30, it says there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. So this plan that God allows the, the liberals to feel so confident will not, will not change at all uh, God's plan, which is for our prosperity. But it's a test. Are we going to be faithful to God and as Christians to stand up and remain, uh, even if we are thrown in the fire and others to be able to see Christ with us in the fire and change the entire culture and the entire. So uh, I just want to encourage everyone like you, you did, that everything is temporary and we are winning. We are not l- losing. We are not losing at all. So again, where people can can find, repeat the the website that you have for the ones that maybe didn't have a pen or pencil ready. Sure. This is for employers to know what their rights are regarding this, employees, uh, students, uh, and even we even have a resource on how they can start a church homeschool co-op for those many parents who are pulling their kids out of public schools and are now mandating vaccines. it's uh, it's simply P for Pacific, J for Justice, I for Institute dot org. P J I dot org. It's that simple. And there they'll see on the front page vaccine mandate. Boom. They click that and everything will open up to them and they can uh, get the information that they need for their particular situation. You know, we even have Virginia, we have on staff an attorney uh, who is actually a lot of military experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, she knows a lot about military rules and procedures. We're even able to help people in the military who are being told you have to take the jab or you can't serve your country. Uh, so we're dealing with that as well. And uh, we, we do it uh, wholeheartedly um, because these people need help uh, now more than ever. And um, it's, it's a joy to do this. Um, there's two other large legal organizations. I won't say their names. They have decided they're not going to help people in this regard. Um, you know, whether or not someone believes in the vaccine or not is irrelevant. The fact is, this is something that is going to cause people to lose their jobs because of their deeply held religious and, and con- uh, convictions that they have about this particular vaccine. Mm-hmm. These people need to be protected like everyone else. And uh, now's the time to defend religious freedom uh, when uh, it's under attack the most. That it's that it, you you said it so well, and I just want to thank you so very much for coming to our podcast for all the values, and I hope people uh, took notes. They can go and uh, listen or or watch the podcast and share it with others. Um, I just want to thank you so very much again. Okay, thank you, Virginia. It's a pleasure to be on your program. Thank you. If you want to know more about Virginia Prodan, the coaching program, buy her book, Saving My Assassin, or invite Virginia to speak at your events, visit virginiaprodanbooks.com.